Hey guys, it's Emily. Another week means another micro class here at Grass River and it is getting cold out. I may or may not be able to feel my fingers. I think I'm leaning toward not being able to, um, but we are not the only ones feeling the effects of winter setting in. So are a lot of animals around the natural area and that includes an animal that is the most active at this time of year, really preparing, stocking up on food that applies to a lot of animals, but I am specifically talking about beavers. This time of year is one of the best times of year to find beaver sign um, anywhere near water up here in northern Michigan. Um, so today we're going to be talking about what to look for when you're looking for signs of beavers on the landscape. We'll talk about lodges and dams um, and we'll talk about their tracks and a little bit about their scat. So before we go any further with actually looking at signs of beavers, I want to talk about some common misconceptions that people have about beaver lodges versus beaver dams. And these are the two main kinds of constructing that beavers do. Um, and they're both created by um, beavers, you know, gnawing down um, tree branches and sticks and weaving them together and packing them with mud, but they're very different functionally. So let's start with a dam. So dams are what beavers use to create habitat for themselves. Um, so they'll often dam up a river um, by building, you know, this wall of sticks and branches and mud across like a narrowing of a slow flowing stream. Um, and that creates the water to back up and creates a deep pond. And so beavers do that because that is the type of habitat that they like to live in. Um, for a couple different reasons. One, it gives them protection from predators. Um, you know, like a coyote isn't normally gonna go swimming out there after a beaver. Um, two, it encourages the growth of some of their favorite um, aquatic plants to eat, like cattail shoots, but also um, the trees that they depend on for constructing, but also for their winter food supply, like aspen, birch, willow, alder, all the types of trees that like to live near water. Um, and then thirdly, it allows them to build their second type of structure, lodges. So let's talk about lodges. So first of all, I should say dams are not always built, like not every family of beavers will build a dam. Um, but lodges are, are necessary for every family of beavers because they are the shelter for the young in the summer, but they are more importantly, the shelter for the entire beaver family um, in the winter. And it's crucial for surviving those cold months. Um, so two types of lodges really briefly. One is an island lodge. Um, that is just how it sounds. It's often created um, in the middle of a pond, um, often a pond that the beaver created itself by building a dam. Um, and it rises about three to six feet above the water's surface, just a jumble pile of sticks and branches packed with mud. Um, and then the entrances are actually underwater. So when the pond freezes over in the winter, the beavers can get out, which is crucial for getting food in the winter, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then the other type of lodge that would be constructed in a place where it's not really possible or necessarily necessary to build a dam, like at Grass River, um, a place where, you know, the water doesn't freeze over um, and they don't need, they don't have to worry about the water freezing all the way down to the bottom because it never does. Um, so in those situations, beavers will um, create a lodge in the river bank. And it's very similar structurally, you know, there's an underwater entrance um, and just a jumble of sticks and stuff. Um, but yeah, so two different types of lodges, island lodges, bank lodges, those every beaver family will build. Dams are something that beavers only build when they need to create habitat for themselves. So this is the most obvious beaver sign that we see are these gnawed down trees. And you see these this time of year often because beavers this time of year in the late fall are doing two things. One, they are reinforcing their lodges before the winter and two, they're gathering a source of winter food. So they'll take these sticks or branches and they will actually haul them out into the river pond, shove them into the mud below the entrance to their lodge and then um, when they need 
food in the winter, they'll actually dive out in those underwater entrances and grab a branch and bring it back in and feed on it. And they don't eat the whole thing, they just eat the cambium, which is the inner bark layer, so right under the outer bark. Um, and they actually are not able to digest this themselves, but they host specialized bacteria in a pouch in their gut called a cecum that is able to digest that cellulose for them. So let's take a closer look at these gnawings. Um, so you can actually see the ridges that are made by the beaver teeth. Um, and this is a pretty fresh one. It's, the bark is still very bright, but if you see some that are um, duller, that means they're older. And often the beavers will cut them. If it's a small diameter branch, they'll cut it on a 45 more or less degree angle like this. But if it's a much, um, greater diameter tree, um, they'll cut it so it looks like a pencil point. And they can cut through trees that are up to three feet in diameter. And oftentimes also you'll see these wood chips, um, very long wood chips that they leave behind too. So two more things to notice here. This is just another view of those gnawings that we were just looking at. And you can see that that is an alder tree that they nod down. Um, and you can see that they preferentially selected that out of um, all of the other trees in this vicinity. So they didn't cut down any of the balsam fir or the cedar. They really want those alder trees because alder, aspen, birch, willow, cottonwood, those are the trees they like. Um, and another thing is if we look just over the boardwalk toward the river, we can see actually where the beavers probably hauled those branches um, out into the river. There's a path of flattened vegetation here. In addition to the nod trees and flattened paths of vegetation leading to the water, you can also look for beaver tracks. I was not able to find any tracks. There was too much vegetation um, covering the mud. But if you do find them, um, they'll look something like this. This is a model of a beaver hind foot. Um, and you can see that five toes are there. Um, there's webbing between the toes, obviously to help the beaver with swimming, though the webbing does not always register in the tracks. Um, you'll see some long, pretty thick, blunt claws um, in the tracks and the hind feet usually about five inches to seven inches long, so pretty long. Um, and then the front feet also have five toes, but the fifth toe often doesn't register, so sometimes it just looks like four toes, um, but more star-shaped and more of an overall round shape um, and less uh, elongated. Um, and they'll have tracks in the front, um, the front, they'll have claws in the front tracks too. Um, and then the tracks often get kind of obscured by the beaver's tail dragging over them as the beaver walks through, which can also be a great telltale sign. Telltale, ha. Um, okay, so besides that, if you're really dedicated and want to look for beaver sign, you can look for beaver scat. And I say really dedicated because beaver scat is often not readily found because beavers often poop in the water. Um, they're pretty neat and so they don't like to poop in their lodges and they spend so much time in the water that that's often where it ends up. But if you do find it, what it'll look like is it'll be about a, like an inch to an inch and a half long, kind of an oval pellet, light colored, um, and it'll look just like sawdust or um, like little wood fibers in there. Um, and yeah, you don't often find them because they're in the water and they disintegrate really easily, as you can imagine, because they're basically made of sawdust. Um, but good luck looking for um, beaver sign out on the landscape. If you see any um, on your property or a natural area that you visited recently, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.